Meet Winnie, the Burmese cat. He's a pedigree and he can prove it. Winnie is the real thing. But as we've discovered, some unscrupulous cat breeders are selling kittens which aren't what they appear to be. And the length the fakers will go to is quite extraordinary. So if you're thinking of buying a pedigree puss, you might just want to give pause for thought. Isn't that right, Winnie? Leamington Spa Warwickshire and some of the finest felines in the Midlands are strutting their stuff at a cat show. We should have several hundred cats here today. But these aren't just any old moggies. We breed Asian short hairs. Devon Rex. Maine Coon. This is a pedigree sphinx. I also have a ragamuffin. We've got the long hairs, the semi-long hairs, and then we've got the short hairs. All the pedigree breed. Their pedigrees, bred to particular physical characteristics with a certified ancestry in that breed. The Burmese are almost like humans, uh, but they also like dogs. Sphinx cats just love human company. Absolutely think they're the most fantastic animals to live with. But this pedigree comes at a cost. Some breeds will set you back a few hundred pounds. Others, like the hairless Sphinx, won't leave you much change from a thousand pounds. And it's price tags like this that have created a darker side to the pedigree trade. One that operates in the shadows and has its own rules. Welcome to the world of the fake pedigree cats. Being lied to and being ripped off like that makes me angry. Kirsten Nicholas has been a cat lover for as long as she can remember. I'm a bit of a mad animal person. I don't think a home's a home without a pet. But a few years ago, after one of her cats was killed on a road, she started looking for a new one which would be better suited to living indoors. She heard about pedigree breeds that fitted that bill and went to visit a breeder advertising one for sale online. I got to the breeder's house. They brought out what was supposed to be a Maine Coon kitten um, that was available if I wanted it. A Maine Coon is a sought-after pedigree breed, originating in America and famed for its hairy chest ruff and bushy tail. She told us that she wanted to keep him, that he was much loved, her favourite, that she didn't have papers for him because of the fact that he was being sold as a pet. Like a fool, you absolutely swallow it all. Kirsten paid the breeder £350 for the kitten and named him Sid. But not long after getting him home, serious problems emerged. He then became very poorly, um, very lethargic. Um, we took him to the vets and the vet told us that he was only three weeks old. Kittens really shouldn't be going home until they're about 13 weeks. The vets gave him less than 24 hours to live. Kirsten tried to nurse Sid back to health, but he never fully recovered. His poor condition made her suspicious, and as she soon found out, with good reason. So this is a photo of my Maine Coon kitten, Fernando. He's got semi-long hair, coat, he's got round eyes, a really nice bushy tail. He has big pointy ears and he has a nice wide muzzle. What's it had none of that? This is a photo of Sid. You can pretty much see that he's short-haired, that his ears are a different shape to a Maine Coon. Sid was a short-haired ginger tomcat. It makes me angry to know that I was sold a fake pedigree cat. I felt stupid, I felt conned. I didn't love the cat any less, but you're embarrassed and you're frustrated and you're confused as to why people would do that. But it isn't just the embarrassment of buying a fake pedigree that upsets Kirsten. They are ill-treating these kittens. We don't know what else they've lied about. We also don't know about the health of the breeding cats. The only way to be sure the cat you're buying is a pedigree is to insist on seeing a pedigree certificate authenticated by a relevant body. But Kirsten didn't know that at the time. She's since become a breeder herself and realises now how badly she was duped. Makes me really angry that someone lied to me like that. 
makes me really angry that someone can sit there and smile sweetly with their children around them and tell you that this kitten that you're taking home is something that they're not. Jackie Cuff from the Catch Protection Charity says the problem of fake pedigrees is growing and it represents a clear animal welfare issue. If a person's buying from a seller who's not telling the truth that the cat's pedigree, you do have to wonder whether the cat has been brought up in the right conditions, in good welfare. Is that cat old enough to be sold? Are they getting a sick animal? Jackie takes us online to show us how blatant the fakers can be. This is an advert for adorable, cute Bengal kittens. It's only £200, that's very low. There's no reference to a pedigree certificate, but the most striking thing is, it's just a picture of a black and white kitten. This is a picture of a Bengal. Spotty, you know, much more exotic, completely different. There's no way on earth that this black and white kitten is a Bengal. This looks like a fake. And it's just one of many. One unlucky Canadian cat lover recently bought what she thought was a hairless sphinx breed online, only to discover it was just a normal moggy that had been shaved. But fake pedigrees are no laughing matter. Here we go. Steve Crow is from the governing council of the Cat Fancy, the GCCF, which certifies pedigrees. He says, to be sure you're buying a pedigree, you must get two types of certification, because pedigree certificates on their own, supplied by breeders, have been faked. It's just a sheet of paper which has the name of the kitten and its parents and ancestors on it. Uh, this sort of thing is not difficult to fake. The only way that you could authenticate a pedigree like that is if there is a corresponding registration certificate like this from the GCCF. And if you don't have those two documents, you don't know whether that pedigree is true or false. For Steve, the aim now is to put an end to the whole practice of cat fakery. I think the practice is shameful, quite frankly. These are living beings. They're not toys. They're not a commodity. It's a living animal, and it has a right to be cared for and treated appropriately.